I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. And when I go ahead, here it goes. It's coming. It's coming. There you go. Very good. And we're going to start. Yes, I'm going to open up a Nearpod, but I'm going to use Nearpod as the presentation tool. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Nearpod. I'm going to log in as me. There you go. And when you log into Nearpod, make sure you log in with your district account. That's where you get the free stuff. And yes, this is a bulb training. I do know that. And let me go ahead. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a live session. Don't worry about the code. The way I'm going to do it, I'm going to go ahead and get the link and share the link in the meet meeting that you can click in. So when I click on the link, I get the link. I'm going to go ahead and hit copy. I am going to put it into the session under the chat. When you click on it, what's going to happen is it's going to open up a new tab. And I'm going to ask you to go back and forth at different times. There'll be times when I want you to practice your skills in Bulb, and then we'll go back into the meet. Right there is the link to the Nearpod. There you go. So, Misha, how many do we have? Right now we have 86. 86. And this session is called Let's Get Bulb. It's Bulb 101. It's our first on our mini Mondays. No, you did a bulb train, didn't you, Misha? Already on a mini Monday? No. No? Okay. We have, we, this is the first one. All right. I don't know why I thought we had one, uh, one before. No. Nope. And we have 36 people joined. Please go ahead and click on that link. Sorry, Larry, can you repeat it again? I got kicked out. Oh, no. Okay, let me put that uh, link back in so you have it. There you go. So there's a link that's in the set, in the chat. What it's going to do is going to take you to Nearpod that I'm using as our presentation tool. All right, Misha, I have 64 in. Is that about right? Uh, we got 90 people in here, oh, what I'm sure. saying. Oh, okay. So we did do a big jump. Yep, we've done a big jump. And then let me find this person here, right here. There we go. Okay. We're at 73 already, 72, 73. So go ahead and please join this bulb. That way you can see the presentation. The good news is we also recording this session and we will be putting it up into our innovative learning uh, YouTube site. It should yes. happen sometime in the next few days because these sessions are so long, it's not so easy to upload to YouTube. It takes a yeah. long time um, and to get it right. So look, take a look out probably Wednesday or Thursday is my guess. What do you think, Misha? That's why I'm hoping to get it up um, as long as uh, they've got um, there, they had some kinks last week where it was taking two, three hours to upload a video yeah. and I couldn't just sit around and do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, watching that little wheel go round and round. Yes. Like I have other things I have to be doing. I can't do this. So, um, but then, uh, yesterday I uploaded one and it, it did not take that long at all. So. Oh, very good. We are up to 80 people in the Nearpod. We're almost ready to get started. How many do we have, Misha? Yeah, according to this, we have 94 people in here. Okay. Please, please join that Nearpod as soon as possible. I'm going to put that link again just to make sure it's there. Yeah, 
Yeah, we have 94, 92 if you subtract Misha and I, and, and then one more for my presentation. Yes. So we're right at about 90. We need 10 more people to get in, so that way we can get started. And the session that we're doing today is Let's Get Bulb. It's Bulb 101. It's the basics of Bulb, how to create a page, and how to uh, create a group. I know that they don't call it a group, but that's what I kind of... We're at 84 now. Yep. And you know what? Let me share out the link again just to make sure. Oh, okay. We're still having some people join. Yeah, we've had a couple of people. Uh, whoops. Let me make sure I copied that right. All righty. Is it sending something else? Let me get this. You got it? You want me to paste it in real quick? I got it. I just have to make sure I'm. I was I was also uh, responding to a couple of emails with you know trying to send them the link and so <laughs> it still had the other one in there. Oh, okay. But I just sent it out again. Awesome. Thank you so much, Misha. We're going to uh -huh. be starting in just a few seconds. So go ahead. We're still waiting on a few more to join. The session is called "Let's Get Bulb Bulb One Hundred One." Bulb One Hundred One. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I don't want to wait too much longer. Now, in the this is a bulb 101. There's a lot uh, you can do with bulb, but basically bulb is easy. The thing about bulb is how do we use it instructionally? And, that, and we'll go ahead and go into that in just a bit. But first off, let's go ahead and get started with a question. What do you think bulb is and how can it be used for education? What do you think it is? I'm going to hide the names. So what do you think bulb is and how can it be used for education? So I want to make you think a little bit. I want you to participate with us. No, not this early in the morning, Larry, on a Monday. I know. Really? I know. Ah. I know. I just want a, a little bit of engagement. Right now is 8.30. Yeah. Got a couple of minutes. Now, what do you think bulb is? And how can it be used for education? Very good. I'm starting to see some of the answers. All right. Very good. And if you want to take a look after you've put in your answer, jump into the meat side. You can start to see what it looks like on my side. We have about 59% answered. Very good. And I know we've had quite a bit of training um, on Bulb at the campus level, at some campus, not all. Um, and we've already started to get roll this out. Last year was what's considered a soft rollout. All right, let me go ahead and you got, go ahead and submit your answers. All right, let's take a look at the first one, one of the ones I picked out. An online portfolio manager. Very good. I, I can kind of see that. So it's kind of like it it allows us to create a portfolio and put our things in. Here we have, I think it has to do with presenting a lesson. So it's, it's another avenue teachers can use. Yes, I agree with that. It, it can be used as a presentation tool. 
here's one. I think it's an, an online portfolio. I think it can be used for interactive notebooks. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's so much than that. The way I, I look at it myself is a digital composition notebook. It's kind of like those journals that we have where the kid, we can write on it. We can paste pictures. We could draw in it. But it's digital. And how we use it, that's where the magic happens. And so what I want you to do now is I want you to watch this video. And this is Bulb explaining kind of what it is. And I'm going to shoot it out to all devices. So when you see the video, it's right at three minutes. So I want you to go ahead and click on and to play it. I'm going to play it on all devices. All right. So right now it's 841. Go ahead and click on it for me. You wanted them to play the video themselves, correct? That is correct. Yes. Let me put the link for the Nearpod back in there, just in oh, case. We, we have had a couple more people join. There we go. Just so you know, Larry, we have 100 people in here right now. We did hit the 100. Okay. We hit 100. And That's we're not we breaking did. anything. <laughs> we're not okay. breaking it. All right. That should have given you enough time. And the way I did, I did the video like this, if I played the video on my side and then we watch it, a lot of times it can stagger it on your side. It, it might stutter in the sound, and it's not as clean. 
And so that's why I wanted you to click the link and to play the video. So now, let's dive into Bulb. Let's take a look at what it's all about. And one of the things I like about Bulb is how it works on so many different types of devices. It works on our Chromebooks. It works on our, our smartphones. It works on devices that have a browser. It's just easy to use. Now, I want you to go ahead and click on this link for me. This, uh, this is in the Nearpod, correct, Larry? That is correct. This Nearpod okay. is, is going to take you to a link. So I'll go ahead and click on the link. Now we're going to go actually dive into Nearpod. Go ahead and click on it. And go ahead and click on it, but then now I want you to go into the meat side. Go to my page, go where the meet where we're all together. And this is takes us to a page for the sign-in of Bulb. Now, to get to Bulb, you can use Clover. You could go to bulbapps.com and get in that way. And but this page is I want you to have it. And when you go in, I want you to notice a couple of things under resources. The, what, the one that I want you to take a look at is the COVID-19 resources. In that, you have a lot of support material to get more and more into Bulb and how to use it. Here we have the for teachers. And it gives you step by step on going to Bulb. So if you kind of don't catch up on everything when, as we go, don't worry. That is okay. Now, when I click on sign in, right up here in the top right, it's going to take me to the sign in page. Give it a moment to load. And in Clever, it'll take you all the way into the system. If you go into the bulbapp.com, you're going to log in using your Google account. You can also use Clever. It, go, it works that way too. But I'm going to use my Google. And it opens up the page. And this is my page, my front page, as I go in. And as I scroll down, it has pages inside that page. So think of this as like my home page, and think of these as my other pages that are in. So let's take a look at the top right. We're going to start right here at the hamburger, at the, and when I click on it. And you're going to notice how you have activities, people that you've shared with, people that shared with you and you'll have the links to their pages. But I want you to also notice in groups, we use Clever to add and roster within Bulb. And in groups, you're going to have your classes that you can go into. If you're departmentalized, you'll have period one, two, three, four, five. If you're not, if you're an elementary teacher and you're just your one class, you'll still see groups of classes. You'll see a language, your language arts class. You'll see your math class. You'll see your social studies class. So you'll see your different classes, but they'll be the same students. And as people go into pages and they hit likes and they like things, you're going to see the likes on here. Like, poor thing. I don't have any likes. But when you go up to the top, here, I'm going to exit out now. And let's say you're doing a search. And then in the search, I'm going to click on the search. And notice I can look for things. Maybe I'm looking for a person's page. I'm looking for something that I'm going to look for. I can click in and do the search. Up at the top, over here in the pencil. When I click on the pencil, I can create a page or I can create a collection. And we're going to go over both in just a moment. Then you have your question mark. In the question mark, here, it takes you to support and help and how to use it. 
and its features and all of that, F FAQs, accounts and integration, what's new and coming up in bulb. So you have that in the question. Now, when I go over to your name right here, this also takes you to that same location over here, it's in groups, all right? So you have that also. Whenever you're going into bulb, you're in one page, you're looking at another page and you wanna go back to your main page, you would click the bulb link. And automatically it will take you back to the home page. So let's create a page. If when I go up to the top, I'm gonna click the pencil. And in that, I'm gonna create a page. And it starts with a title. Now, when we're using Bulb, we can use it in so many different ways. Maybe this is going to be a page on an assignment that my teacher gave me. Let's say the teacher is telling you to write about somebody that's important in your life to get you to write. And so you just heard my little granddaughter with me right now. She's with her grandma right now. And I'm going to call this Aria. Right. Notice, add to cover image right up here. So when I click on add cover image, it gives you options. So not only am I writing about Aria, I can make it fancier. I can make it, I can add all my things that shows my personality and my writing. So up at the top, I can upload, I can go to my asset library. Anything that I've used in the past will start to show up. Notice some of the images and things that I've used, those are in my asset library. Notice I also have Google Drive. And in Google Drive, I'm gonna go to my personal account because that's where I have my pictures at. So I click on my personal account. I'm gonna hit allow. And from here, I can take a look and I can take a look at pictures and bring them in. Okay. I'm going to close this out. Add cover image. Then I can also go to my Microsoft OneDrive. We have Microsoft and we have stuff that we can store in OneDrive. Maybe your students are taking pictures with their cameras, with their phones, they put it in. That works. I can do a web search if I wanted to. I can search for different things on the web. But notice down here, I can browse this device and grab an image from my computer or my Chromebook. For now, I'm using Add from Google Photos. It's gonna ask you which account. So I'm gonna pick Larry Snyder, my personal account, and it's gonna make a connection to my Google account. So here I have different pictures that I have, and I'm gonna pick my Aria photo album. I hit select. I'm going to do a double click, let it open before I hit select. And these are all my photos. Heads up. If you're with a family and with you're taking pictures, take a look at Google Photos. It's amazing what it can do. Notice how I have all these photos from Aria, literally hundreds. And it starts all the way back from when my daughter goes in. But I'm going to use one of the photographs as my title and my title page. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm looking for something specific. And I'm looking for something with her eyes. Give it a moment to load. I'm going to scroll down. All right, let's go with this one right here. So I'm going to click on and hit select. So what's going to do is it's going to take that picture and bring it in. Now, notice how it just got the top of her head. That's not what I was after. But do you see I can go ahead and click and I can drag. And then once I have it kind of to where I want it, then I can hit save. See how easy that is? 
And now I have this page about Aria here. If I change my mind, and a lot of us do, I can go ahead and hit this trash can and delete the picture and start all over. If I need to move the picture around again, I can click on it, and then I can drag and drop and move it into the way I want it. I'm going to hit save. So there I have the picture of Aria. And from down here, notice when I click, this is my, this is my granddaughter. Hey, 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 Larry. It's Monday. I know. <laughs> and, and what I want you to notice, I have the text, right? And if I click on it here, and I highlight text, notice how I get options here. I can make this bold if I wanted to. I can make it into a link. I can underline. I can italicize. I can make bullets if I wanted to. So I have all those options. And I'm gonna call. I'm gonna put in it. All started on this day. Let me hide this. So now I have, and I'm gonna go ahead and click down. And with this interactive page, I can bring in videos. I can bring in pictures. So now let's say I want to bring in a picture of our a video. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on video. And I have those same option choices from the top. I can bring in upload or embed. I can go to my asset library. I can go to Google Drive. I can go to Microsoft OneDrive. I can put a link to a YouTube. So maybe I'm building a page on Shakespeare and on a certain play, and I bring in that video that I found on YouTube, and then I use this for students to study. Yeah, I could do that too. So think of this using it as instructional too. I'm going to pick a video from Google Photos. So when I click on Google Photos, I click on my personal account. I'm going to go back into Aria. And one of the things that I would recommend doing when your students are creating, that maybe they're going to do a research page, that they build a folder into Google Drive, and then they start to put all the different resources that they're going to use for this paper that they're going to write. Now, here is a video. So I click on it, and I select. And notice how it's coming in now. It's going to upload the video. Larry, we have a question that can yes. we add a link to videos to our study sync textbook in here? Absolutely, you can. Now, in study sync, you have the different links that you have that you would use. So I'm going to bring this in. Absolutely, you can. So now, and you'll see why this is a special time. When I click on it, okay, so you have this video. I'm going to go ahead and close it out. That's when we found out that she was going to be a girl. Then as I scroll down, notice how I can add my text. I can add image again, file. I can grab audio, maybe a website link. And so this is how you build a page. So this is what I want you to do. Remember that link that you clicked on? I want you to go back to that link. I want you to go ahead and create a page. Go in, take a look, and just practice. We're going to give you five minutes. Right now is 9 o'clock. And we go to 9.05. I'll be on the meet side if you have any questions. So go into your 
Nearpod, go into that link, open up that link, open up Bulb. I'm putting the link to the Nearpod created. in again. There's the Nearpod link again, just in case somebody didn't get it. Okay. And the website is, is actually nearpodapp.com if you want to go directly to it. I think that I'm not sure if the link is going to take you to Clever or if I think it's going to take you to Bulb. It takes you directly to Bulb. Yeah, that's what I thought. And then you have the login screen right to the right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If this is the first time that you've been in Bulb, I think they're going to ask you to create your cover page first because that's kind of like your, your title page of you. Um, and that's where I would start because it's all the same stuff as creating any other page. Yeah, if this is your first time, yeah, you are going to have to create that cover page, your first page. And Veronica, I think there's a way to sign in with Google. I'm correct about that, right, Larry? It's been a while yes. since I've signed in to, to Bulb because it automatically signs me in now. Yes. Just click on the sign in with Google, and it'll sign you in because you already have an account. You don't have to, like, it's going to create it for you, but you already are, like, kind of signed up for it. And you can also use that Clever if you wanted to. And then yes. you type in your Clever username and password, and it'll take you right on in. Many different ways of getting in there. Absolutely. For me, me Gloria, the easiest way is to is to log in with my Google. I just go to the bulb, I type in bulb, and then I just log in with Google and it logs me in. Yes, uh, Google Classroom and Bulb does work together. And yes. in just a moment, we're going to talk about how do you share your Bulb pages. So, yes, absolutely. Yes. We'll be going over that. Uh, can you hear me okay, Misha? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I've I been know. keeping uh, tabs on the chat. And um, I'll all of a sudden, this, she said, I can hear you now. I, I think it, there was a setting issue because everybody, I mean, I can hear you fine. Okay. So. Both of you guys sound fine. Okay. Thank you. And as we go sometime, and that's the other reason we're asking to turn off your cameras is because with all that bandwidth going through, sometimes our network goes up and down. And then one of the things that will knock out is your audio. And so that's kind of what, another reason we ask you to turn off your cameras. Okay, what we want you to practice for another minute, and then at 9.05, we're going to start talking about how you share your pages. Amanda said that she tried to add a link directly from StudySync. And it asks if it's a public domain or not. You know, on the study sync, they might have it locked. That's what I'll I was contact, thinking. I'll contact McGraw-Hill and see. Yeah, sometimes our, the textbook companies and sometimes the different resources get very protective. Should it work with our district user password? Uh, basically, instead of trying to log in that way, just log in with Google because it'll it'll log you in automatically. And for our students, what you're going to have them do is go through Clever, go all the way down to the resources at the bottom where Bulb is. They click in, and it'll automatically log them in. And for you too, actually. All right. Now, 
I hope you had the opportunity just to get your feet wet. I just wanted you to get started. Maybe you just did the main page first. Maybe you did a secondary, starting a secondary page. But once you have a page, let's say this is my page that I have. This is Aria, and I have the video, and I have the different information. And I can do, click up here where it says share. And when I click share, I can copy this link, and I can give that to somebody. Down here, it'll shorten the link. Here, I can copy that link. I can put it into Facebook. Google Plus is kind of going away, but it does have it there. I have Twitter, but and I can do it in LinkedIn. I can have my mail, but this is the one that y'all were talking about. This is the one for Google Classroom. So when you click on Google Classroom here, it's going to tie in to your district account and to your Google Classroom. So once it opens, I'm going to choose my class. I'm going to hit practice class for now. I'm going to go ahead and choose action. I'm going to make it an assignment. Let's say it's something where the students is a resource page where it has different links to different web pages that I want them to go to, maybe a couple of YouTube videos to prepare them for a lesson. And I want them to go through it before they come to class. So I'm going to hit create assignment and I'm going to hit go. And notice here, I can pick my class. I can pick multiple classes if I wanted to. But notice the all students. This shows all students. Now, I don't have students in this class, but if I did, I could take that check mark off and then I can assign it to the students I want to give it to. Another way I could differentiate my Nearpod. Then I have. Right here is the instructions, and then how it's many points. Now, that's how you can share your Nearpod with your students. If ever, let's say I'm, I'm going around and I'm in a page and I'm kind of lost. To get to my main page, I can hit bulb. Okay, now you see, look at it, it says publish now or publish later. I'm going to publish it now. In fact, I should have done this before I gave it into Google Classroom. So I'm going to hit publish. All right, it's a private link. And what that means is it's private, but if you have the link, you can open. If I wanted to share it for a specific person, I can put their bulb username here. This is the link that it created. Now, notice this right here, add it to a collection. We're not into collections yet, but this is where you can add that page into a specific collection. And then I can put a summary. You can also create a template. And what a template does is maybe I start the students with the basic look, and then they go ahead and open up the template, and then they go ahead and modify. That's where the template would come in here. I'm going to hit publish. And now it's published. When I scroll down, notice how I have my pages here. And I have now my ARIA page. Now, notice this one, brainstorming how I will use Bulb. That one's unpublished because I'm not ready to publish that one yet. Notice this one. This is maybe a journal writing, and I'm talking about my favorite food, the hot dog. Don't, don't judge me, but if I've got my hot dog is my favorite food, and it's not, the updates are not published yet. If I click on it and open it, I might have added things to it, images, and this is what I added to it. And so if I'm ready to publish, I can click publish. And now I want you to notice it's a private link, but I also added it to SLED ISD. That means that you can find my hot dog page if you really wanted to. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit publish. 
now it's published. So as students go, they're adding to their page. I work on it today, and then I publish it. I work on it later today, but I'm not ready to publish yet. Then that part is unpublished. Everybody just sees that part that I had published. Now, I noticed that we talked about present. Think of present is to make it nice to look on a screen. So if I click on present up here, it takes it into a full screen where it makes it easy to watch on a full screen. It's kind of like in a presentation mode. When I hit exit, it takes me back into that main screen. And so now I'm back. If ever I need to go in into edit, all I have to do is just start to click. If I click outside of this text box here, then I get the options of adding video, the image, the file, the audio, a website URL. Notice up at the top, if I highlight, remember when you highlight a word, it gives you options. So I highlight grilled hot dog. I want to add a link to it. And then I can paste that link. So basically, it's creating a word page. I mean, it's like a web page. But it's a journal also. And it's something interactive. It has links. It can have videos. Think about what your students can create with this. So if I highlight this whole section here, all right, and I want to make it bold, I have it. I can make it italicized. I have it. So think of it making a web page. Let me go ahead and take a look. Right here is the share button again, just to remind you. I have the link. I have Google Classroom. Now, let's go with the three dots. Here is where if you go into an area and you want to make comments, you allow people to comment on a page. Uh, it, it's your call. But notice how I can click on and turn on comments. So make sure you, if you want your students to comment on your page, this is where I would go ahead and click and then put in comments. So you might make the assignment is, please comment on your favorite video and why. And you have about four or five videos that you want the students to watch and then they have to comment. Maybe they have to comment on each and every one of the videos. Here you have preview and live view. Okay, if you want to preview it, see what it looks like. Preview allows you to see how this draft will look like and others after it's published. So it's kind of like you've been working on it, get fancy and everything else, and you got it, and you want to see what it looks like before you publish. There you have your preview. Now, if you want to see what it looks like now, then you have your live view. Right up here, you have the arrow. If I click on the arrow, it takes me back. Do I want to publish this later? Let's say I did work on it, and I'm not ready to give it to my teacher yet. It's due tomorrow, so I'm going to publish this later. Just keep in mind, I'm going to show you something as a teacher. At any time, you can go in and look at your student's stuff by going into the little hamburger, go into your groups, and you see how I've got this? That means other people started to look at my stuff. I, so, and then they put, they put a comment on it. If I go into groups, this is where you'll have your classes, and then you can put in for your class. Wait, and, did you say classes, Larry? Like your classes are going to appear there? Absolutely. Because we, we roster through Clever, Clever will share our classes, our student lists with Bulb, and they build your classes. So in here, you have groups. Now, this is the entire Slida group. But below that, you would start to see your classes, first period, second period, third period. My ITSs and librarians, you're going to see by grade level the entire school. And then up here, I haven't liked anything yet. I am so, so, so sorry. Now, 
Here's the activity. This is what's been happening on my pages. So let's go back and let's create a collection. Let's say this, your students are going to be using this as a science journal. And in that journal, they're going to put different parts of lessons into theirs. So I click on create a collection. And I'm going to call this my science journal. And then I hit create. All right. Now I have, who is it visible to? I'm going to go with the SLED ISD. That's everybody. Search for users. I can go ahead and put this for users. All right. I might share this with my class or with my teacher. Now add a cover image. It's kind of like a page where you can make it fancy. So if I click on add cover image here, I can upload. I can go to my Google Photos, all the different ways, just like a regular page. But I'm going to go ahead and do a web search. And I'm going to search for science. Let's see what comes up. All right. Kind of like the Earth. Kind of eerie with a bulb. But then I pick, I click on it. Give it a moment. It brings it in. Remember how you can drag and make it the way you want it? And then I hit save. Gives it a more polished look. Exactly. And it's something where you can be kind of proud of. So now let's see what it looks like. So if I go into bulb here, I'm going to go back home. And then as I scroll down, here I have a page that I created. I have my favorite hot dog. Food is the hot dog. Brainstorming. Aria. And then now I have my science journal. So I know Aria is not a science experiment. experiment. And there you go. And when you go back out, I think it, it, uh, it'll show the science journal and this page will be in there. You see, so I'm clicking away. Here's my science journal. I'm going to open it up. And then there's my aria mm -hmm. inside the journal. So here's we have a collection. So now let's think about it. How can we use this for instruction? So now I'm going to go back to the Nearpod lesson. So I want you to go back into Nearpod. I'm going to go into the teacher mode. Give me a second. And I'm going to add an activity. Now I'm going to ask you, after you saw some of what it can do, now, will you use Nearpod? I mean, both. Excuse me. <laughs> and then hit share. So now I want you to give me some ideas. There you go. Yeah, that was a question we had a little while ago. What is the difference between a collection and a page? And 
I just said that a collection is kind of like a container for a page yeah. and I would use it as a topic. Absolutely. Like you did. I can use, I could see it. Think of it like a folder that just holds your stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you, you bring in the other pages into that folder. So that would be a collection, but it's pretty. It's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just polished. It's clean. It, and you can share out a collection. So maybe your collection could be on vocabulary. And let's say I'm a language arts teacher and I'm in a, we work on different writings, different books. And so I put in the collection all the different books that my students will read. And inside of that, each one, I went go ahead and I put in vocabulary words that matches to that literacy, that book. And, you know, I noticed that there's an audio uh, selection where you can select audio files, like from your Google Drive. And I was thinking about, you know, like Twisted Wave and having your students, you know, say a few things. And then that can be uploaded in, up into there as well. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And that one magic thing called that link that you can put in links. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, it's perfect. Think about, we've all been talking about literacy notebooks and getting literacy notebooks started. And you can create a collection, call it literacy notebook, and then put the different parts of that literacy notebook inside. And then the students can add the pages to the different parts of the literacy notebook. Okay, just to use it, how's my students work? Writer's Workshop, absolutely. Yeah, having them to use us and organize their work. How many times do we have where the students have different journals and they turn in the journal to you physically? And then right now in this day and time, we would have to take that journal, set it out, or you're going to have to put gloves on and a mask to go ahead and read that journal. Well, if it's a digital journal, there's no COVID issues. Grammar, absolutely. ISN, absolutely. An interactive science notebook. Yes, absolutely. And so when I click on share, I'm going to share out some of these ideas. Professional development. Oh, that's a good thinking. Mm -hmm. and for us, we can, as we go to all these PDs that we do, what do we do? do? Are we all on scratch paper taking notes? Well, we can use our Google Drive and then put our notes in in Google Drive and then put them into our bowl. Absolutely. There are just so many different ways of using the science journal. Have students organize their work into notebooks, folders, collections to turn in, make it easy. And so that is Bulb 101. We could take it to another level. And, and, and I'm thinking that we should have some more sessions on how to use it in different ways. Yes. But I wanted you to get started on how to, just to see what it looks like, how it feels. Now, I know, Misha, that there's a competition coming up that was postponed. Um, yes, there was a competition that we were going that we had kind of rolled out um, pre COVID um, for <laughs> our teachers to create a couple of pages about themselves, you know, an about me page, you know, my philosophy on using SEL in the classroom and um, just a showcase of what was going on in the schools. Of course, we're not in the schools right now. And yet, yes, we could still write about ourselves. And yeah. my recommendation to all of you, we're going to be rolling that out again sometime in the fall. Um, I don't know. We have to wait and find out 
what our schedule is going to look like first. Um, but what I would make the suggestion to all of you is to get in there and get your feet wet. Make a page about yourself. If you want to make it about your family, make it about your family because nobody has to have access to it. It's not like what you put it out there that it's out there for everybody. You can publish it and you can keep it private. And and that's perfectly fine. And every it saves automatically. So you don't even have to even publish it if you don't want to. If you just want to create something to see how, how to do that, do it. Absolutely. And then if you delete it, you delete it. That's okay. I have deleted 20 some odd pages already just playing with it. Make a collection. Try it out. Take a look at it. If you have kids that are in the Sleda, they have a bubble account. Have them jump in. Have them do a journal writing every day where they write a few sentences just to see what it looks like. You know, maybe um, I'm going to do a journal and then I'll do some writing. But what we want you to do is get playing with it. We, we do have a question about how, how do you change the way that you publish? You know how you can make it public or you can put it to just YISD. Could you show that, Larry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me go back. I'm going to end that activity real quick. But let me go back into my journal. And let me go into ARIA. So I'm going to open it up. And when I click on publish right up here, this is who can see your page. Here is where you can search for user. Okay. So if you know the Bulb user, you can put in their name and information. Here is where the private link is. All right. So you want to share that link. You can copy it and then you can share it out. Now, notice here that it's going to Sleda and it's a private link. So this is all a sled of people can see it, but all this is a private link. So only people that can see it is if you give it to them, that link. Right here, that means if somebody would search for ARIA, they can actually do a search for ARIA and they will find that page. Now, this is the collection that it's in. If you have more than one collection, you can change it. And then, Notice of course, there's X's. The you can actually X out of some of those so you can take them off as well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And save this as a template. This is where you build it something as a template, and then your students can utilize that template. Now, this is the thing that is visible, too, that you need to be careful of. If you don't want the district to be able to find it, see it, then is make sure you X out for the Asleta ISD. To add, notice I can click this little carrot down, the selection arrow. And when I click on it, come on, did I already get everybody? No, no it's not popping I think, up. I think it's already, I think it's already there. Maybe you can X out of the Asleta. Yeah, no, I think it's maxed out already. You have the private link and then the Asleta. So yeah. when you click down, that's where you get your choices. Okay? So that's where, how you publish. And then when you're ready, you just go ahead and click on Publish. And there you go. But when you're working on something in practice, you don't have to publish at all. Now, I'm going to go back up to our Nearpod. I'm going to skip this video and some of the ideas. So let's say you're going to start a short story. And so you have the students that are writing, and you want to make sure that they, you put in plot, character, conflict, theme, setting. So you start in, and this is like a thinking. They're going through it. So they build a collection. They name it. Then inside the collection, you have a section, a page called plot. So that where they could type in ideas for plot. And then they have a page for character. And then they type in all the different ideas for character. And then conflict, what the conflict is going to be in the writing. And then they can talk about the theme and they can do the setting. And then when they have it all put together, then they can write their paper. So this could start off as a collection on a story. Maybe you're doing uh, the writing on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. 
And then, then they go ahead and they read the book and under plot, they, they put in some of the key plot ideas and different characters. They put in the different conflicts that are happening. And so we use this as a literature. And I hate to break this to you, Larry, but we are already out of time. Oh my gosh. Well, I did put this as in the question already. So we got that. I'm going to go ahead and end this session. It went fast. Oh, my gosh. It, it goes really fast, yes. We're going to be in the meet now for the next 30 minutes. If there's any questions, anything that you have. But and we are going to go ahead, and we did record this. We'll put up in YouTube probably Wednesday or Thursday.